Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the GPD Pocket 2, which is a tiny little laptop computer, or a palm top, really, uh, given how small it is. It's something that you could easily hold in one hand. It's got a 7-inch display, a 7th generation Intel Core M3 processor, and it sells for about $529 and up during a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo as of July 31st when I'm shooting this video. It's eventually going to be available for a higher price at retail. Um, it's a pretty nifty little device that is basically everything you would expect from a small computer, but it's so small that there are some interesting choices that had to be made with the keyboard and sort of mouse or touchpad uh, type area. And that's what I wanted to focus on in this video. So I've got another video that's a general purpose preview. You can check out YouTube or lilliputing.com for more details about that. Here, let's take a look at the keyboard and talk about what makes it unusual and also how usable it is. Uh, generally speaking, I'll just tell you at the outset, I type maybe a little bit less than half as fast as on this device as I do on a full-size keyboard. The layout is a little bit unusual, the keys are a little bit small, and you sort of, the more you get used to it, the, the more you might get a little bit faster, but sort of bunching up your hands to type is always going to be a little bit uncomfortable if you're doing more than a couple of minutes of typing at a time, I think. So for jotting quick notes, great. For writing, you know, your next novel, I don't know. It's going to be up to you to decide. Um, but you can do more than just enter a simple URL. So you could do thumb typing on it if you really wanted to. Uh, it's a little bit on the wide side to reach your thumbs all the way across, but I think it's really designed for uh, touch typing, or at least 10 finger, or maybe six finger typing, I would say. So let's talk a little bit first about the layout. One of the first things you might notice is there is no touchpad. There's just not room down here for a touchpad if you wanted the device to sort of close up nice and compact. And first generation Pocket had a little pointing stick here. This instead has a optical touch sensor up here. And it works sort of like a touchpad, but uh, it's in a different location, so you have to reach up and touch it. You also have a touchscreen display, so I could just reach up and touch the screen that way, but this gives you a little bit more precision. So for instance, I can mouse over to this folder and I can either tap, but that sort of makes the cursor move. I can click, so let's double click to open, or on the left side here, there's a little left and right buttons. So I can click and say I wanted to rename this, I could right click, scroll down to rename and click. Let's try that again, see if we can get it to work. There we go. So now I can rename that uh, item. It's not the most precise form of input, but it's on a screen this small, I think it's a little bit easier than using your fingers for precise action. So for instance, let's go to Google's auto draw application, which let's uh, start over and I'll show you, this is me trying to draw a smiley face. It looks more like the mask from Scream, I'd say, and Google's having a hard time figuring out that it even is a smiley face. Uh, it seems to think that it's a football outfit or something. Anyways, uh, meanwhile, I could just do this and use the touch screen, which for a lot of things I think would probably be easier. So that's a quick look at the, uh, the sort of touch input. In terms of typing, let's take a closer look at the keyboard. Um, we've got a small space bar down here, so if you're used to typing and sort of reaching down with either thumb to hit it, you might occasionally hit the wrong key. Um, we've got the colon and the uh, quotation marks over here next to it, for instance. Uh, so we've got a small space bar, relatively small enter. There's only one shift key. There's a shift key on this side, not on this side. Same goes for control on the left side, not on the right side. And that's just because there's not really enough room to have all the keys be, most of the keys be the same width uh, and still fit on the device. So I appreciate that rather than having sort of half width keys other than this question mark uh, key, the keys were moved around, but it does mean that if you're used to using a traditional keyboard, you might have to hunt and peck to find certain things like the period, the question mark, the colon, the semicolon, and the apostrophe and quotation marks. So just to compare that, this is a Logitech keyboard. It has a slightly more standard layout. Next to the M is the uh, comma, period, question mark. Next to the L is the quotation and um, colon, and then enter. 
here, it goes M comma page up or arrow up and then period because the page up key couldn't really fit lower. Next to the L, it just goes straight to the enter. So the question mark, which would normally be here, is up here. The colon and quotation mark, which would normally be here, are here and here. And so I just find myself, as I'm typing, anytime I need to use those, it takes me a second to be like, wait, wait, right, it's down there. Uh, likewise, there's not room for F1 through F12 keys all the way up here. So we go F8, F9, F10, F11, F12. Now these keys on the top row are half height, so uh, they might be a little bit harder to press, but generally speaking, it's not too bad, and these are keys you probably aren't going to use as often. Uh, it is interesting that the hyphen key is above the number row. Uh, normally the hyphen and the plus and equal keys are in the number row, so that's another one where I sometimes have to remind myself where it is. Same goes for the brackets and slash and so forth here. The delete key and the uh, backspace key are pretty much where you expect them to be, which is nice and something that you don't always see on these tiny keyboards. I should also point out that this is a prototype and these four keys are mislabeled on the prototype. I've been assured that they will be uh, labeled correctly on the units that ship to users after the uh, crowdfunding campaign ends. Uh, the most important one for me is that this is not the tab, this is the tilde, that's the tab. So. Um, you can find more information at lilliputing.com about the correct arrangement of these, but tab, tilde. And then finally, up here is this little sort of touch area. These are basically all physical buttons that are covered in what looks like a top touch sensor. This is not an LED screen, though. These are just regular uh, icons that are always there. And we've got brightness up, brightness down, volume up, volume down, mute. We've got the power button with a little LED indicator to let you know when it's on and a fan off button. So when the fan is off, it glows green. When the fan is on, you don't see anything at all. The um, reason to turn off the fan is you get silent operation. You don't hear the fan noise, and the fan can get kind of noisy at times. You might notice a slight slowdown in performance. I honestly haven't for the most part when using it, uh, but if you do start to feel that the computer's getting sluggish with the fan off, you can just turn it back on. Uh, you'll deal with a little bit of extra noise, the, but the computer should run cooler and that should allow it to perform better. And then finally, we've got the left, right uh, click buttons here and the touch sensor over here. So that's the layout. Let's talk a little bit about performance. Uh, as I mentioned, I tend to get uh, 40 to 50 words a minute as opposed to the 80, 90, 100 that I normally get. But I'll show you here with this online typing test, I'm gonna just sort of uh, do that. So this will take about 60 seconds and then we'll see what my score is. The Word astronaut derives from the Greek words meaning star and sailor, period. These men and women, Alan Shepherd, John. Glenn Jr. period comma Sally Ride comma to name a few conjure up images of bravery and adventure period they are modern heroes helping so that's the test. Let's see how we did. 47 words per minute with seven errors for an adjusted speed of 40 words per minute. So as I mentioned, I normally probably type somewhere closer to 80 to 100, so this is about half. Uh, in addition to sort of having the small keys that make it a little bit easier to hit the wrong key, having the weird layout that might make you uh, have some errors, um, you know, I look down at the keyboard more than I usually do because I have to be like, okay, right, that's where that key is. The more you use it, the more you're probably going to get used to it, and your score might go up. But it's also, your hand's just a lot closer together when using this keyboard than something with larger keys. Your hands have more room to sort of space out. So it can sort of start to hurt after you do too much. It's the sort of keyboard that uh, you can use for more than just entering URLs or you know having quick sort of chats. 
Um, you can definitely take notes on it and do other things, but I don't know that I would necessarily want to write a you know, book or a dissertation using just this keyboard. For a little bit of writing on the go, it's great, but I honestly found, for instance, uh, when writing a couple of pages of text one evening, I started writing on this and then ultimately just picked up my phone to finish writing that document because I found it more comfortable. I'm not sure if it was faster, but it was more comfortable to write on my phone using uh, Google's on-screen keyboard. So. It's nice to have the full-size key, well, not full-size, but the full QWERTY layout. You have all the functions that you need, including the F1 through F12 keys. You've got the little control function and um, Alt and Windows keys here. Everything that you would expect from a keyboard is on here. It's just unusually placed and a little bit on the small side. It's totally usable, totally something you can get used to, totally weird the first time you try it. Now. GPD isn't the first company to put out laptops with 7-inch screens. In fact, if you've been following the little laptop space for a long time like I have, uh, Asus put out the EPC, uh, OLPC put out the, their sort of XO laptop uh, around 2007, 2008, uh, around the time that I started Lilliputing.com, in, in fact. And the at the time, the bezels were just much larger, and that allowed for a larger keyboard. The EPC, the EPC 701, the original EPC, Still had a pretty small keyboard, but it was bigger than this one, and there was room for a touchpad in this area. And typing on that was a little bit more like typing on a regular laptop. The layout was more of what you would expect. In order to sort of make everything more compact and the size that you can just sort of put in one hand and fold up and even put into your pocket, uh, GPD did have to make some compromises. And generally speaking, I think the choices that they made for the second generation are better than the choices they made for the first generation. And also generally speaking, I'd say that this is easier to type on than the GPD Win, which is a uh, another sort of small device that is a five inch screen and more of a thumb style keyboard. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna wanna do this whole thing, but let's choose a Wizard of Oz test here and I'll show you thumb typing. And it's a little bit more awkward, but it's doable if that's something you really wanted to do. Dorothy lived in the midst of the great... See, I'm getting more comment <laughs> uh, errors here. Great Kansas prairies. And it's already showing me I'm getting less than 30 words a minute. So I'm going to stop that just because it's kind of painful. Um, and so you also you can use the optical touch sensor pretty well. I actually find the touch sensor slightly easier to use in this mode. So if you're playing, say, point and click games, that might be something that you might want to consider doing. You're going to get more, more precision if you connect an external mouse, I think. But you do have the option of sort of mousing around and doing things this way if that's more comfortable. So uh, that's the keyboard and optical touch sensor experience. Overall, I think it's uh, it's a nice little set of compromises. If you really want something this small, this pocket size, this portable, you're not gonna get a full-size keyboard unless you had some sort of fold-out thing, but this has fewer moving parts and is uh, probably got better durability for that reason. So it's an interesting layout, and for the most part, I like it. Um, I just wouldn't necessarily want to use it as my only computing device. But as a secondary device, if you can afford the uh, the prices, um, you know, it's a, it's a nifty little thing. It's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to want to use something with a small screen and a small keyboard. But if this is the sort of device that you've really been looking for, this is probably the best keyboard that I've tried on a 7-inch screen uh, laptop that's as compact as the uh, GPT Pocket 2. Not that there's a lot of devices in this category. It's pretty much the Pocket 2, the first generation Pocket, and the One Mix Yoga. And of the ones that I've tried so far, this is my favorite keyboard. So that is the GPT Pocket 2 typing experience and mousing experience. You can find out more at lilliputing.com uh, or check out YouTube, uh, our Lilliputing channel on YouTube, which uh, I think I'll create a playlist now that I've got several videos. So there should be a GPD Pocket 2 playlist there as well. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.